In this video, I take a look back at one of my favorite shows as a kid, Wonder Bug, the 70s self-aware supercar with eyeballs. First, we'll go over his facts, his powers, and then talk about whatever happened to the cast. Plus, we remember some of the guest stars from Wonder Bug. Oops, I <laughs> almost forgot. Don't forget the goose at the end of the video. Wonder Bug ran between 1976 through 1978. It was a segment of the Croft Super Show. It also featured Electra Woman and Donna Girl, Bigfoot and Wild Boy, and Magic Mongo. It's me, Captain Cool. Take off. Super Shot. The series was featured in all 32 episodes of the Cross Super Show, but only six new episodes were produced for the second season. The show was obviously inspired by the TV animated series Speed Buggy that featured a talking car with the voice by cartoon legend Mel Blanc. The show had a lot in common with Scooby-Doo as well, Speed Buggy. They faced criminals who sometimes try to scare away somebody with uh, Bigfoot hoaxes or phony ghost stories. And like Speed Buggy, they faced the occasional sci-fi evil like a mad scientist with a shrinking ray or an android. Like Scooby-Doo, the kids would often run in fear from the bad guys until they were able to capture the crooks with the aid of Wonderbug. Wonderbug had both a board game and a lunchbox that was sold in 1976. It was created by Joe Ruby and Ken Spears, who also made Thundar the Barbarian. Wonderbug's secret identity is Schlepkar, who is actually falling apart. Our exhaust pipe and our tailpipes. Thanks to a magic horn of unknown origins, the old car can turn into a super car. Wonderbug was self-aware and spoke in mumbled jargon that only Barry could understand. What's my car saying, Barry? It's nothing. The kids would often lose the horn, or it would be stolen from them, to which they would have to get it back so Wonderbug could save the day. He just said that weird guy and his android stole his horn. Stole his horn? And without that horn, he may never be able to become Wonderbug ever again! Wonderbug's powers included flying, Won't be long now. bowling, <laughs> shooting out water, soap, or other liquids, his antenna served as an arm to allow him to grab things, he could also even use his seatbelts to throw at crooks and capture them. He was also a master detective. Carol Ann Sefflinger played Susan Talbot, the smart girl who came up with all the plans but never got any credit. According to IMDb, she hasn't done anything on TV for a while, not since uh, 2013. Before Wonderbug, she did a couple of episodes of My Three Sons and a two-part Shazam episode and a few other classic TV shows. Her character Susan was always coming up with plans that Barry would get the credit for. Why don't we just form our own gang? But that's exactly what I... Another terrific plan, Barry! Frank Welker was the voice of Schlepkar. Frank has done tons of work in animation. His most famous role is Fred from Scooby-Doo. After the original voice of Scooby, Don Messick, retired, most likely for health reasons, Frank Welker became the voice of Scooby-Doo as well as Fred Jones. Jack Baker played CC. He was the energetic member of the gang and kind of reminded me of J.J. from Good Times. Seatbelts really do save lives. <laughs> <laughs> he actually did one episode of Good Times and Happy Days. Fans of Happy Days might remember him as Sticks from two episodes of that series. He was also on a few other classic TV shows here and there. According to IMDb and Wikipedia, he went on to star in the adult film industry and sadly died early in life in 94 at the age of 47 from bladder cancer. David Levy played Barry, who was sort of the leader of the group. He always stole Susan's ideas and got the credit for it. His own ideas were often crazy and basically for comedic effect. We're gonna love this. We get 
Are you ready? 4,000 pieces of bubble gum. He actually earned an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Individual Achievement in Children's Programming. Even though he was somewhat the leader, his character was a little nerdy and provided a lot of comedy for, for the show. He says on his website, quote, I got more than a little tired of being cast as the nerd in a wide array of television commercials. Sometimes it's hard to separate the actor from their famous roles, especially ones you grew up watching. So it's almost amazing to me to find out that David Levy was uh, actually now a psychologist, professor, author, and stage director. In 1977, when Wonder Bug was still on television, he starred on a TV miniseries entitled Little Vic with his Wonder Bug co-star Carol Ann Sefflinger. His last acting gig was Cheers in 1992. He played the leader of Frasier's low self-esteem group. At that very time, he was practicing clinical psychology. Now let's talk about some fun guest stars that appeared on Wonder Bug. Avery Schreiber guest starred on the second episode, Schleppnapped, where he played a bad guy named the Great Zucchini. It's a little ironic, they also played the bad guy Captain Manzini on My Mother the Car, a show about another talking car. In that show, he was always trying to make that show's car his own. The Great Zucchini hypnotizes Wonder Bug into doing his bidding for crooks that stole Wonder Bug. Now, your motor is falling fast. And he probably would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. Billy Hayes guest starred in the episode, I Kid You Not. She played on another Croft show, Lidsville, which she starred with Eddie Munster, Butch Patrick. What carnage! We're not guessing, know what they're doing. Hal Smith, best known as Otis the Town Drunk on the Andy Griffith Show, guest starred on the episode, Schlepfoot. Schlep car is okay with us, thanks. <laughs> he was a real bargain. Uh, how much did the junk man uh, pay you to take it? <laughs> Hal did a lot of voice work on Saturday morning cartoon shows, so it's no surprise they would guest star in a live action Saturday morning show like uh, Wonderbug. He did voice work on episodes of the Dukes cartoon, Plastic Man, Casper and the Angels, The New Schmoo, 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 Jabberjaw, just to name a few. These are all series that he lent his voice talents to. Casey Kasem guest starred on the second season episode, The Big Game. Of course, Casey starred with Schlepp Carr's voice actor Frank Welker on Scooby-Doo. Wow! Two million dollars! You know that's over ten million hamburgers complete with mustard? Not to mention lots of other cartoons, like the voice of Robin on the Super Friends. That's easy! We're in the first clue right now! If you were a teen in the 80s, you probably listened to Casey Countdown to top 10 songs on television and the top 40 every week on the radio. America's top 10. Right now, let's turn to the action on the Billboard Pop Singles chart and count down the 10 biggest songs in the land this week. I never seen Casey Kasem or heard Casey Kasem act as goofy as he was on this Wonderbug episode. <laughs> so, so, so what are they saying? The crowd at the ballpark, they're screaming for their money back! <laughs> On that same episode, famous baseball player Don Sutton guest starred. On the episode The Incredible Shrinking Wonderbug, Gordon Jump played a villain who shrinks Wonderbug down to a Hot Wheels sized car. He was famous for playing the boss from WKRP in Cincinnati, a sitcom that would begin in 1978. I hope he doesn't pop a piston. Now it's time to look at some funny goofs. Whether they are intentional or not, I'll let you be the judge. There were two types of wonder bugs used for flying scenes. For close-ups, they used a real car, which if you look closely, you can tell that the tires are slightly depressed, a little bit flattened at the bottom, as if they were still sitting on the ground. Still, that's the most realistic flying scene, I think, that they had. Then there's the extreme aerodynamic shots where they use a toy wonder bug. They work fine when it's just wonder bug, but it's kind of weird when the gang's in the car. For those shots, they actually turn into dolls. They did the same trick with Wonder Woman in her invisible plane in the 70s. This is what CC calls heading them off at the pad. In some scenes, they would use a puppet to make Wonder Bug more animated, which worked okay sometimes, and other times, not so much. Personally, I like it best when they stuck to the real car at least most of the time. 
I might have thought differently when I was a kid, but I honestly don't remember my thinking back then, other than freaking out if I missed an episode. In the episode Schleppnapped, a man is robbed and it's up to Wonderbug and the gang to get the crook. But to me, the goof here is the surprisingly slow speed that the crook is running. I mean, if you're going to be a crook, or shouldn't you be able to run fast enough to get away? I don't know, maybe this guy was a smoker. Stop it with the super slippery sliding stuff. Well, I guess the lesson was that crime doesn't pay, especially if you're a slow runner. In this scene where Wonderbug catches the crooks with his seatbelts, I'm pretty sure the bad guys actually clamp the seatbelts uh, together themselves. Well, this is how they usually spell schlep. In this pic from the intro, it looks like they left out the C. I wonder, maybe they just couldn't make up their mind quite how to spell it. Well, this has been TV Crazy Man, and you're watching the TV Crazy Man channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, hit the bell for future notifications, subscribe if you haven't already, but please let me know what you thought about the video. And uh, I've got another channel called Freddy Cat Cartoons. I don't post as much because it's animation and it's, uh, it takes a while to do it, but uh, I'm working on a cartoon right now. I hope you'll check out whenever I get it finished, hopefully maybe next week sometime. And of course, uh, I usually post uh, one or two, uh, mostly two, two videos a, a week on the TV Crazy Man channel. So anyway, got that to look forward to. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. Come on, guys. We've got a robbery to foil.